Welcome to episode 30 of Road to Distraction. To Distraction, and the sun is out, folks. We've actually got sun in Wales. We are, this isn't actually an effect. We haven't put it on the film after. No, thank God. We've actually got sunshine. I know it's rare in Wales. I mean, today, it's, it's sunny now, it's a Saturday, which means today is our summer. Yeah, and we've got so. a, a car in front of it straddling two lanes. Well done. Yes, because the car in front of it was just greedy. There's a guy on a quad bike. Quad bike. Because he can, and a bloke cycling a bike that looks like he really, really needs to be taking a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's up first then? Oh, go on, go on in. You waffle today, and I will stab you in the face with your own ribs. What do you mean by waffle now? Just talk. Belgian waffle. Um, blue waffle. From chocolate lovers, oh, so it was a chocolate or whatever it is. The Irish food company Tato. Tato? <laughs> Irish. Irish Tato, yeah, go on. They just call themselves famine. Yeah, oh, so anyway, carry on, Connor. I've made a chocolate bar, right? The flavour of it is cheese and onion. No. The firm has already sold out of the 100,000 bars it initially produced, produced in response to requests from people on social networks. Cheese and onion chocolate. Chili chocolate. Yeah. Nice, so yeah. No, it isn't. It is. No, it's vile. Well, they did that. I have no idea. I've, I would... had, I've had a bowl of chili and then had some chocolate. Does that count? Well, actually, no. if you have chili con carne, part of the recipe is actually put dark chocolate in there. Oh. But I've had chili chocolate and I didn't like it because it was gay. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate bar has received mixed uh, mixed. I was going to say, it was a received mace. I thought, great, people ate it that much. They just sprayed it with pepper spray in the face. Wonderful. No one ate! Ah. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, come on, come on. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> Notice the awkward silences when Connor does it. Whenever Connor does a yeah. story. He goes, and the chocolate bar, he was actually in the shop and there was, um. Perhaps his nightmare else from it off. Bought it. He's frozen. <laughs> Somebody put a 10p piece in it to get him going. He'll tell you where. No, over to James, because I yeah. can't think James, because he lost the middle of the story and he's rubbish. Okay. <laughs> um, did you know that a group of owls is called a parliament? A parliament of owls? Yeah. What's a parliament called, though? Oh, a group of arse, isn't it? Yeah. I only Sorry. Got no <laughs> <in> the owl. <laughs> uh, you've got an owl nightmare owl. A group of them be a parliament of owls. Parliament of owls. So, or, or parliament of nowhere the owls. Or a wisdom is also referred as. Ah. Uh, I didn't know, I don't know. But I didn't, I didn't care. Wisdom is full of shit. Nightmare owl to make a bit of. Okay, Paul. Okay, I've got, I've got one here. Um, yet again, uh, Hollywood are doing their usual, oh, let's reboot something because we can't think of fuck all to film. Uh, they're apparently going to remake Time Cop. Well, that yeah, that was my question. Then, Why? Why? Everything that was said about a really bad film was said in the really bad film Jean Claude Van Damme made. <laughs> They've only ever got about halfway through that film before switching it off. They made a TV series of it as well, and that sucked. Was that on sci fi? Uh, no, know, it wasn't. Um, it was something. Jason Staff on the time film. No, he Jason wasn't. No, is he going to be? No, he might as well be. I don't, they haven't actually cast it, they just said they're remaking it. Again. And also, of course, Men in, uh, Men in Black. Mission Impossible 5 <sighs> has been greenlit, and yes, Tom Cruise is in it again, and yes, Tom Cruise is probably directing it again, yeah, because it bit, it's done by his company, Skydance, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Let me know when they remix Space Jam. Yeah, I will, that's the day I'll vomit in my own face. Why, why, why are they trying to milk off all these film series? Oh, I wish you wouldn't say milk off. Yeah. <laughs> no, they try, they try to make, like, instead of having it like a oh, trilogy end of, they're going for four, five, six, seven. Well, box office receipts and, 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 and studio executives, they have a big say in yes. films now. I mean, Damn. Um, right. they fund the films, and if you think there's a money getter, they'll uh, they keep tuning in. Let's up. make Paranormal Activity 29! Yeah, yeah that, that's starting to really. And still have the same thing off, off, off camera. Off. Scares you can predict. Dodgy yeah, effects. Effect <laughs> yeah, what was it? Mass Effect 4, I don't think they made Mass Effect 1 the film yet, do they? The game, yeah, Mass Mass film, it. no. It's like, um, it's like Fast and Furious has gone from <laughs> you know, racing to God knows. Full on action. And well, so good. There's so much you can do with racing. Uh, yeah, I mean, they try to make them part of some sort of squad now, and they, I don't know, 
It's got yes. the terrorism item, bloody now, and it got the rock in it. Yeah! Sick. Who seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Yeah. He, though he is apparently playing Hercules, I did you hear him say on one thing. So that's probably why he's, his, his arms are now bigger than Gwent. Speaking of big things like that, I yeah. still haven't seen the, um, the Conan remake with. Um, haven't you? With what's it's, his name in it? Oh, yeah, I can't remember his name. Let her in! The hell is he Is, is he playing Mario Kart? Oh, God. Checking bloody banana skins out of your window? At least it's biodegradable. Yeah, the it's animals are either. Ah, yeah, the guy who played Conan in the, in the, uh, the newest reboot of it. Um, yeah, and he played Carl Drogo in Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's a huge guy. He's fast enough to play the part. Except, I think. I don't know the script was a bit on the ropey side. I thought he played quite a good part, but to me, Co he wasn't big enough to, for Conan. Yeah. Conan the Barbarian's arms are feckin' huge, which he's about the same size Arnie was. Which, yes, is definitely being confirmed now. They are starting to remake another Conan film at the end of this year. With Arnold. Yeah, but he's going to play the older Conan with the grey hair and the beard and whatever. Uh, probably so. when his kids get kidnapped and he's got to get it. Yeah, it'll be like, it'll be like Taken with a sword. Oh, like Commando. Oh, yeah, Commando with no Taken. No reloading. I'm going to kill you with my semi-machine gun sword. Sorry. Right. Anyway, Lee. Okay, uh, a man fought a 25-stone bear that was attacking his family, and he won. Uh, he... Basically, they were out in the wilderness, as they are, and um, this bear suddenly appeared and started to approach his family. And he got in between them and the bear, and the bear won back off. He tried to make himself look big. And in the end, they got into a fight, and the man won by basically repeatedly punching him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome! Not for the bear, bear but yeah. Which yeah. bear girls was born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, you stupid Winnie the Pooh look-alike. It's Steve Irwin in another lifetime. Yeah. Um, well, the bear or the guy? He initially tried to uh, keep it back with his camera tripod, but the bear just swiped at it and <laughs> shattered the tripod. <laughs> so I, he thought, okay then, you've just destroyed my tripod. That's probably not the only thing that <laughs> I My wife bought me that! Yeah. Smack. How you made me angry. <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Angry! But fuck with a guy with a beard like that anyway. It didn't work out well for the bear because the US Fish and Wildlife Service managed to track it down and they shot it. Oh. What for? You only wanted a new tripod? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, oh, you're broken. Damn! You only wanted a sandwich. What he was actually <laughs> saying when he was growling was, he goes, have you got a picnic yeah. basket? <laughs> True saying. True one, dude. He was looking for Bobo. He was a dirty bastard. You got Bobo and then you got Bobo. Bobo, same thing, really. I wonder what he's doing these days, old Bobo. Still dressing as a Sasquatch. Well, I like it's the Kung Pao things. What the hell? I know, yeah, chap full. Okay, right, we're gonna do a review, which we wanted to do last time, but we ran out of time. And yeah. it is for Iron Man 3. Big booty bitches for you. Big booty, big, big booty, yeah, there's, there's a black guy in my old mother too, yeah. And um, I don't know what you all thought of it, you've all seen it, I think? Yeah, I've seen Iron Man 3, yeah. and so was... Uh, it was fucking amazing. Yeah, I enjoyed Iron Man 3 quite a lot. It wasn't... I'm gonna put it's more Tony Stark than Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. more about him as a character, yeah. as a person, and dealing with the aftershock of what happened yeah, in, in Avengers Assemble. Yeah, uh, which was quite good. I mean, I I, I like this new uh, Mark 42 armor. It's kind of cool the way they've done it, and uh, yeah. yet again, Jarvis in there with his nice little cocky comments. Yeah, which I do it kind of does like. follow um, the comic book side. Yes. In this one, as opposed to the other two, which are more grounded in reality. Yeah. Even though we still don't have flying men in suits. No. <laughs> but um, yeah, I. To be honest, for me, I found it a bit jarring because I read the comic books related to this. What? The extremist. Yeah, extremist yeah. and world's most wanted mm. storyline. Where um, and they blended those two storylines together. So a few times I was going, ah, that's not how it works. And then at certain points this happens and that. But yeah, it's an enjoyable film if you just detach <laughs> yourself from the comic book side to. of it. You got it with a lot of it. Um, because this whole. Uh, where the enemies like grow glow red was because of Ezekiel Stain that uh, generates the technology and turns them into suicide bombers. And if you don't know who Ezekiel Stain is, he is Obadiah Stain's son from the original right. Iron Man. Got you. And he's out for revenge because basically Tony killed his father. Yeah. In the comic books, and that's the whole storyline. And basically, Ezekiel destroys all of Stark's sites by doing these human bombs and takes Iron Man just down to his, you know. Which B, is what they've been basically yeah. doing this. Yeah, and that's basically what the film does. 
and then it, and it merges the other storylines as well from Extremis. I, I liked it. I liked the fact that it showed that somebody who's supposed to be in the depth of the action can suffer from the same problems as yeah. you or me. Uh, I loved the look of the Mandarin right up to the point <laughs> they showed you what he was. Yeah. Um, Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, tough. It's been like a month and a half now. Bad luck. The Mandarin isn't the Mandarin. He's an actor playing the Mandarin. Not in so like, oh, he's an actor playing the Mandarin. He's pretended to be a terrorist. Somebody else pays him to do it. And he's actually called Trevor. From London. From London. Uh, they offered him plenty of things like drugs and like a car and stuff and things. And um, even though I thought Ben Kingsley acted both parts very well, I would have liked to have seen a Mandarin that was actually really the dangerous person yeah. he should be. Okay, they couldn't do the magic ring shit. I know that would look stupid. They could have had rings that were connected to technology that he has in, in a suit or a harness under his body or something. It could have done anything. But instead, they made him this sort of like dangerous pimp gangster terrorist. And uh, he wasn't even there. And I, I felt a bit let down by that Yeah, because he, he was like a big part of all the trailers and stuff. And yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Some people say I am a terrorist. Yeah, he solid too all over and him. it was yeah. such a big letdown because Sir Ben Kingsley is a fantastic actor and it would have been great to see what villain it could have been. Yep. And it was a like, good bait switch, really, on part of it. I mean, it was a nice switch, right? Yeah. It's it, it, it quite a funny switch and it, it actually was a funny section when he comes out and he threatens him with a gun. He goes, and he, he walks up the toilets and he goes, which one are you the Nissan? And you think, what? What's happened to his voice? And then you discover then, you know, he's, he's not actually the Mandarin. He was hired to play the Mandarin yeah. by somebody else. And the bit I really love is like Tony Stark's there with a gun threatening him and he falls asleep. And he goes, he goes, he's nudging me, he goes, do you just knock off, nod off? And he goes, no, no, not at all. And I mean, overall it was a good film. I enjoyed the film. Yeah. And from uh, a prop builder's point of view, which I love building props, and now we've got a new prop builder here. Actually, this yeah. one here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's now his new addiction besides filming. Yeah, it is. Um, everything was beautiful. I mean, the suits were stunning. I mean, I love the Mark 42 suit. Really nice design. Look, though I would have used a slightly different colour than the, the washed out gold colour on it. Um, I'd seen some photoshops of going the other way around, uh, where the gold parts were red and the red parts were gold. It looked nicer. Uh, but my favourite suit had to be the Heartbreaker, um, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's chunky as hell. Uh, but yeah, all, all, all in all, I enjoyed the film. Good action, nicely paced, um, well shot. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was good to see um, John Favreau in it as well. Yes. After the reported bust step between him and Robert Downey Jr. I think it was probably a bit more exaggerated than they cared yeah. to say. Because yeah. Okay, you're going to be upset the fact that, you know, Robert Downey Jr. in the second contract said he could choose director for the, the next project. And because the Iron Man 2 apparently didn't do as well, even though it earned more money than Iron Man 1, um, he chose a different uh, director, which upset Favreau greatly. And they did have a quick, bit of a snipe at each other for a while, but it seems they seem to have got over it. So at Comic Con, they seemed okay. You know. But. Uh, yeah, it was nice to see the film quite well done. A lot of people are expecting full-on Iron Man everywhere all the time. Yeah, well, no, if you're going to do that, there's no point in having Robert Downey Jr. there. No. You know. And I quite like the fact they brought out the human side of it. Yeah, a bit like um, Batman, Dark Knight Rises, and I'm expecting everybody to like, strip Batman of all his yeah. wealth, and he's just a big character, and he's you see the real person. Right, we're going to have an interview now. Paul's going to change character. He's going to become Tommy Stark, who you haven't seen for a while. He was last seen getting uh, well beaten up by Jilly, his assistant. Um, so, Tommy, what did you think of this third Iron Man film? Seeing it, it's another mega blockbuster, and yet you haven't been in, in any of them. Well, to be honest, uh, I wouldn't be very happy yet again. Tony, uh, yet again doing a fake American accent. Not very happy with that tone. Come on, you know you're from Plano like me. Got a big house, which he said he was going to leave to me, and then yeah. he went and blew it up. It's still better than the one I got. So you actually moved into that place in Malibu, even though it's a death trap? Oh yeah. It's, it's warmer than a cardboard box. It's great. But the film I thought was lovely. I don't know what he's going to do now. He blew up all the suits of armour. And the only one left, Rody gone now. And, and, and he promised me one of them. 
been very nice at all. So I'm now living in a destroyed mansion. How did you afford this in the I, I snuck in. I put shorts on, shaved my beard and pretend I was 12. It worked! All I do is carry a kind of strong bow, they believe me. So, um, Daisy, Tommy's starting to go anywhere and he's recognised yeah. around the world. How, how do you feel about the attention? Would you like some of that attention? I'd like some of the money. But, yeah, definitely. <laughs> But you don't get a lot on the door. Have you ever been approached to be part of Stark Industries? I know that. Uh, yes. Pepper doesn't seem um, that she wants the job as director. Well, no. The only job they ever offered me it was it was quite good. He said you you go places, you clean up, and he was right because Janet does a great job. Uh, and I, I, I'm fed up now with mopping floors at Stark Industries, and it's not uh, how you put it. Well, it's fucking shit, really. Well, on the upside, Chili has now left me alone. She's found herself a man. Well, the same man, he's inflatable. But she's out of my hair. Oh, brilliant. It's great. So you can move along with your life now? And I can. Excellent. It's great. Um, as, as are the rumours true that you're going to be part of the next uh, Iron Man or Avengers film? It is true, yes. Apparently I'm the gopher. I'm bringing coffee for everyone. Ah, oh, brilliant. To pay well? No. But I do get free coffee. Well, that, that really cloud us a silver lining, I suppose. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Tommy Stark there. Uh, how about... Did you know that Johnny Depp, when he was making uh, the um, Ichabod Crane thing, what? Sleepy Hollow, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the horse he used in it, he actually kept, he adopted, he bought it, because the tree, they were going to have it put down after the film. Oh. So he bought it, and he gave it a good life. Whether it's life now, I don't know. Whether it's in Tesco's Burgers, I'm not sure. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. <laughs> Uh, in Belgium, a, um, a, no, a truck <laughs> carrying over one million euros yeah. um, fell out of the back of his truck into the streets. Oh. And the police have recovered only 25% of the so money. A million euros? A million euros. That's, That's like four pound twenty. <laughs> Uh, police are appealing for people if they find the currency to return it back, but <laughs> apparently the scene was they was the streets just suddenly covered in all these people and within like 20 minutes it was all gone. So they're still oh. looking for 75% of this money. Oh, yeah. yeah they'll, they'll find it eventually when it's spent on shoes and tellies <laughs> and new cars. Yeah. Awesome. Connor! That hurt. Oh, it's um, you. I had something to say then. I can't find it. That's great. James! Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, according to the Bible, Leviticus 1927, you are not allowed to cut your hair or your beard. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? So, uh, all these Christians are going, It's unreligious, it's ungodlike to be gay! You shave, you're breaking the law. Yeah. You big, big weirdos! Free marital sex. Yeah, that's another one, that's in the Bible. You're supposed to have that. Yeah, yeah, or tattoos, apparently, called Leviticus. Yeah. Leviticus is a real arsehole, really. Yeah, he was really. He'd just sit in the house like, and smash himself up. Everyone about. else is out getting drunk, he sat in the corner. It's like, Thou shalt not drink. Thou shalt not smash themselves about. Thou shalt not listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, thou shalt not rape thy neighbour's donkey. <laughs> he says as he's doing it. Yeah, donkey rape. Sorry. Should be thy neighbour's ass. <laughs> oh, that was it, yeah, I knew something like that. Unless his neighbour's ass is really nice. Oh, Yay! Factoid! Do you realize that swear words are processed in a different part of the brain to regular speech and they help reduce pain? Which it, it doesn't, that's bullshit because I swear like a motherfucker on my back's alerts. Yes, he does. Motherfucker. I mean, I mean, in the early episodes of RTD, oh, um, for all five of you who've watched them, uh, I used to bleep Paul all the time. Too different. It was too difficult because it was yeah. just basically 25 minutes of. Motherfucker, motherfucker, yo, 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 motherfucker. That's what happens when you're well. See, my back's alert. Yeah. So that's why I put a disclaimer up in front. So yeah. you've got no excuses for watching this video and you're easily offended. Yeah. Besides... I don't think the swear words are the main thing that would offend people, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm offended. Really? Oh, I'm so upset. Bad luck. <laughs> okay. My wife's life won't carry on. A restaurant oh. in Poland offered cervical cancer on the menu after a translation mix-up. 
What? How is that a translation to mix up? <laughs> it's like they're running a bloody surgery in the yeah. back or something. Apparently it was offered um, amongst the cold starters. <laughs> Cervical cancer served on a beetroot carpaccio with a mustard honey dip for 25 zloty, which is equates to five pounds. <laughs> oh, great! Uh, and, and for afters, even a rectal diarrhea. <laughs> uh, I don't want to brain tumour. Oh, this is wrong. Stop that. That's oh, wrong. Oh What's wrong with him? Seven months to live. Uh, <laughs> that's wrong! Yeah, he didn't actually say in the report what it was meant to be, but yeah, that's what happened in Poland. So, Connor, have you remembered your story? Um, yeah, only, only parts of it. Um, that's fucking awesome. Those who have pre-ordered Grid 2. What is it? What's going on next Friday? It's, it's a game. A game in the Toga, the Toga Race Driver series. They just call it Grid 2 now. Is it made by Code Masters? Yes. Uh, um, it's, it's, a, a, it's a special it's edition. Um, well, the price of it, I thought, a typo error. Of course, I saw it in Lee. You can pick it up for a cheap price of £125,000. What comes with it is a back mono supercar, if I remember the name correctly, a full racing suit with the Grid 2 livery on it, a helmet, and a day down the BAC, or mono, whichever one is, the BAC factory. Okay. And you get a copy of the game, and... I hope so, for I'm only really after a look. A PlayStation yeah, yeah. 3 to play it on. Good. Only exclusive to the game. Did they pay for the insurance of this car? I have no idea. I bet they <laughs> don't. They the I bet they don't. They just explain what you get with the car. I was like, 125 grand, and I was thinking, that's a type where, and then look, I was like, ah, right, so I get a car. Crazy. The only thing is, it only does 170 miles per hour. Only? Only? Where are you going, Mars? <laughs> right. Of games, the Xbox One looks like a piece of shit. It does. I don't even use consoles, and the Xbox One looks like a big shoebox with holes in it. No, no, it looks like a VCR. A TV, TV, yes, it does. Call of Duty with a dogs. Betamax one. Yeah. What, you youngsters out there? Well, I, remember I, the Betamax I video? Print tape in, jump on the button to make it play. <laughs> I actually had one of those. I, I remember the Betamax, yeah. I think it was broke, though. By the way, Gearbox got sued. Did they? Right. For? Body on Yay! Wow. Oh. For false advertising, was and, it? you know, embezzling money. False representation of their product. Yay! They stole money from Sega. Oh, they did, yeah. Because they diverted it into Borderlands 2, was that? Yeah. That's and naughty, you shouldn't be doing that. Taking the money for like a hundred man team and only had four people working on it. Yay, that's good, not so well, 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 and then, well, it's they good. They worked like a hundred men. It's good that Time Gate Studios got shut down as well for their partner. One thing now, before James goes, ready? ready? The famous Windows startup sound. You know when it goes boom, ding, 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 was composed on an Apple Mac. Yeah, I knew that. Awesome! Bunch of arseholes. Can you wow. sue them for stealing? No, a bit late now. It seems it was like about 300 years ago. So Steve mm. Jobs has got his finger on the pulse. Firmly up your ass. Yeah. No, sorry. In, in the windows as well. It's windows, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at me. We haven't got it anywhere now. He's in a box somewhere. Or an urn. Uh, yeah, probably still in the Apple oh, offices, I expect. They've probably had him skinned and stuffed. I'm mechanics Stood there pointing at everybody who walks in through the front door. How dare you! Buy apple, buy apple, buy apple, buy apple. Unless you don't like apples, then buy pineapples. <laughs> yeah, that's the Chinese version. <laughs> Wayland Yutani. Sorry. Building then, better worlds. <laughs> no. Enjoy yourself, Paul. Well, David, what can you do? I can rape your dog. I can, no, sorry. If you haven't seen that, <laughs> Paul is referring to um, a short film on YouTube by... Wing Wing Shoot Bug. Yes. They done a piss take of the uh, David, is it David 8? David 8. Yeah, David 8 video. Yeah. Now there's a normal yeah. version, and then they also do a side-by-side -side comparison, one on top of the other. Then there's the 18 plus version. Perfect timing. Um, <laughs> it's comedy timing. Bike bell. Um, which is perfect because uh, somebody, I'm, I'm not saying who it is, has their really? cock out. That's why it's 18 plus. What? He went, yeah, yeah. One of them does. I was you then. I was like... Yeah, it's Connor. Connor, put it away. Oh! Sorry. And uh, basically, the, the one line goes, I can do things that my human counterparts find offensive, such as shave your cock. Or your balls. Or this just a your thing cock. to go out on. Yeah, but it's very, very funny. Oh, you have a look at it, scene for scene, they've got it 
timed exactly. Yeah. But the, ad, the ad, adult version doesn't need to be there because, I mean, the normal one is perfect. And it's really funny. But go to Wing Wing Shoot Bags page as well because they're really good. And they do some stupid stuff. And there's Susan Black about the reload. And they've done, done a film last year which she finished editing now. And go and see their stuff. They're great. Indeed. We'll be back after this short break. Okay. And welcome back. To part two of Road to Distraction. Which, which is stopped, uh, being a bit short. James Off and yes. Nightmare Owl and the other silent companion, which you didn't see. You didn't see. There was uh, James's friend Sarah. Yeah. Very nice young lady. Okay. Uh, it's on to me then. Uh, the NASA Exploration Rover on Mars accidentally drew the image of a penis. <laughs> There's a photo on screen now. And what happened was, it was doing uh, tracks around the planet, as it does to map Mars. You see the picture as a cop. And um, <laughs> it was just driving around the planet, spinning round in circles, doing, taking panoramic photos, and then spun round to take this particular image. <laughs> and It's definitely a cock. Yeah. And within minutes, it was retreated around the world, and it's had like half a billion views already on NASA's website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you, NASA. No matter, you know, humans, they go thousands upon thousands of miles away and then vandalise the surface of a planet by drawing a dick on it. <laughs> no wonder aliens don't contact us. Yeah, that's why aliens don't speak with us. Are you sure? Are they among us? Well, they've had that big thing over the last couple of weeks, haven't they, in different right. countries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a drone it on Mars. Um, <laughs> but they've been discussing about uh, different uh, spaceships or whatever and things that people can't explain. Yeah. And they've said some stuff is not explainable. No, so there's a lot of mysteries on this planet that we still don't uh, understand and we tend to shy away from them, saying, yeah. oh, yeah, we don't want to know that. Kirsten Stewart, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah, it's just real. We just focus on narrow-minded. The human species can be a bit narrow-minded. Just open your horizons, people. Yeah, you can, I, I, I know, no, no, not silly, but religious people, they don't believe there's people from other planets because God created Earth, and that's the only planet. Yeah. No, it's not. Almost, really, there's lots of them. Anyway, Connor, have you got anything? Um, I can review a game. Uh, go on You've in. got, like, two minutes. Go, go, go. Um, I can review Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, how have you? Time. Yeah, go on. Yeah, for its age, it's a good game. Do graphics. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, um, Which one are we talking about? Which one from Stein? The uh, original one? From 2009. 2009, the remake of it. Until they released the newest one. Um, it's a good game, I like the storyline. Good game, good game. Um, unless you play the original ones, I don't think you can understand what the hell's going on. Because I'm looking at it and when the characters speak to the main character, BJ Blaskovitz, however you pronounce it. Yeah, Blaskovitz. BJ. Right. They all, yeah, your BJ. BJ. Yeah, they do call him BJ. Which I laughed at. <laughs> uh, they do, they do mention his past experiences, but of course I haven't played the game, so I'm like, uh, what? What's he done? Say what? He's done lots yeah. of stuff. Um, I just don't understand him, where the hell Nazis have got all this technology and all this, but... Because... They're Nazis. You don't even understand it, they just have. Right, so simple. They're Nazis, I'll just go with that. Yeah. Um, it, it's a good game. It, sort of, when you go through the, the missions and right, you get new enemies, go into the main area, because you go to the main area and you talk to people and you find new missions and you go into another... You know, you go into the mission Oh, like area. a hub then. A hub yeah, world. Um, it's sort of like, uh, if you're, like, you're playing like Mass Effect, where you're, you're in like a home area and then you go into different areas for missions. Okay. You come back to the home Sad area world. later on. It's sort of like that, you know, you get, the, you get the enemies respawning, but when you see new enemies in missions, they also spawn in then, which kind of takes a mick then, because I'm sat there trying to you trying to shoot them, ah, yes. and I've run out of ammo. It's like, like a cheap shot, really, in, in programming, yeah. they just lazy designers in that respect. Mm. I mean, um, even Bioshock Infinite does it towards the end. Not wrong, is it? No. Yeah, it kind of takes a mick at some point. It's a good game. I like the way you can upgrade the guns, right? but it kind of takes a make at one point where I'm lo it's loading a mission. It says there are more upgrades than you can buy, so choose wisely. I'm like, oh crap. Choose wisely. And if you want to sell the upgrades, they sell back for half the price. So, uh, <laughs> Just like real life. <laughs> kind, of, kind of screwed if you want this one certain upgrade and you can't afford it. Just a bit. I'll, I'll give it. Uh, I'll end the review now. I'll give it f three. And a half death phase or five. 
three and a half dance beats. Now, I, I'm going to finish on a quick little story. Um, apparently, over the last week or so, there's been a bit of an uproar over the new Star Trek film. One particular scene, there's an actress in it called Alice Eve. Now, very beautiful woman, very gorgeous figure. She's obviously worked out to get her figure and like the six-pack she had in the film in that shape. But they're complaining because the camera shows her in a render way and lingers on the shot for a few seconds. They're not bored about it. And I quite don't understand why. I mean, they're thinking of Star Trek, the original Star Trek with rose tinted glasses. Uh, original Star Trek episode, the opening title's got a green Orion girl, not wearing a lot. Uh, in the last Star Trek remake, with uh, like Abrams made, Green Orion Girl in her underwear. She's also the girl from a uh, new TV series, Continuum. She's the same girl. All right. Uh, also, Uhura was in her underwear. Uh, in many of the episodes on TV, there have been women not wearing a lot. And But suddenly now, in this new film, Alice Eve is in her underwear, and people are complaining about it. And the director's going, oh, we'll take it into consideration next time we make the film. We do apologise. <laughs> Why are you apologising? It's just like she got her tits out and started riding a bed post. It's in a porn film. No. She's in a runaway. It's just like somebody in a, on a beach in a bikini. Exactly. Get, get I don't get it. And they've been up a about it the last week. Just complaining, complaining, complaining. It's pathetic and sad, guys. Yeah. It turned like she's out the you know, she, she like she's blowing Kirk, or suddenly it goes from being Star Trek the, the, into darkness to Star Trek up my arsehole. It's not suddenly a porno. It's just a woman in underwear. And her character is in it because she. The character she played, Carol Marcus, in the one with William Shatner, is the mother of Captain Kirk's son. So she's brought in it and shown how she was brought into it. She's in her underwear. I don't understand what the grief was about. I saw it on the trailer and it makes me want to watch yeah. the film. Oh, she's a beautiful woman, I'll see. She hmm. was also in Men in Black 3. All right. She played, um, uh, she was the boss, but she when she was younger in it. Yeah. Um, can't remember the one who was running it. Is it O? O her name is? I don't know. Anyway, she was in there and she was in there. She's a good actress in there. And she was also in Sex and the City 2, where she played the nanny. God bless her for wearing a t-shirt and getting it wet. But yeah, Ben, it's, it's, I don't understand the, 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 the uproar about it. It's really quite sad. I mean, people look back and they go, Oh, Star Trek isn't like that. Star Trek isn't like this. No. The new Star Trek seem to be a lot better because the old Star Trek, you look at some of those storylines, are ropey as anything. <laughs> they are really ropey. The effects are ropey. The acting is really, really ropey. It ain't as good as you think. Honest. I don't quite understand that. If you've got to comment on any of these things, about films or anything else, then you put it in the box underneath. Box below, and we'll respond to it. And if anyone wants to correct me on anything, feel free. Yeah. I'm not going to get beat off of it because I can't remember much. Yeah, it's all constructive feedback, we accept that. Yeah, it all is, it is, it is. As it's long all. as it's constructive. I, I mean, I did want to mention one other thing before we went. Go on, and it's a, it's a sad thing to end on. I was a soldier this week, got murdered by two Muslim extremists. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the extremists got what they what was coming to them. I do believe the police, the police gunned the one down and don't happen to the other one, I'm not I sure. Both they did both dead, yeah. right, and they got what well, they did come to them. Not only did they attack the man with knives, he was a drummer in the military. Uh, they tried to behead him with a meat cleaver. Now, all I saw on Facebook this week after that was quite racist comments. And to be honest, just because you're a Muslim, it doesn't make you instantly a terrorist. Okay? It makes them extremists that will believe bullshit that other people are feeding them. I used to work with Muslims, a couple of them. And the one guy told me that he finds it sickening that extremists use terrorism and they use his Bible to promote it. It's not on. That's not what the Bible's about. Their Bible's the same as ours. The only difference is Jesus Christ was a prophet, not the Son of God. And he hates that idea. But the other thing is, a few weeks ago, an elderly Muslim gentleman was killed. You didn't see everyone on Facebook complaining about that. You didn't see much in the news about that. Now, I'm just finding it a little one-sided for people. Just because somebody's a Muslim doesn't make them a bad person. If you want to see bad people, Woodborough Baptist Church. They're using the name of God, which I don't believe in anyway, to promote their hate. They might as well just call themselves the Ku Klux Klan. Hmm. Which one's the ones against gays? 
That's them, Woods, Woodborough Baptist Church. Oh. They're actually going to uh, the Slayer. Is it well, was the guy from Slayer who died? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember I his name. I do apologise. Yeah. And they were going to picket it, which is a stupid idea. But the uh, one of the, most of the guys from the band have said, don't do anything to the Woodborough Baptist Church people. They're quite sad. They're quite pathetic. Just let them get on with it. They don't deserve the attention, which is right. Mm. But I am a little sick and tired now of seeing anyone using anything for racist comments. It's yeah. quite pathetic. It's the 21st century, for fuck's sake. Yeah. People are people. doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, fucking scotch plaid. If you've got two fucking heads, who cares? People are people. They fall into two, two, two columns of me. I like you or I don't like you. Simple mm. enough. Mm. But uh, I was going to leave it on. Stop the racism. Stop being so sad. It's pathetic. On the upside, I got fantastic nipples. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it there, folks. That was episode <laughs> 30 of Road to Distraction. 30. 30. Each one of them's a 10. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>